Okay, gang. A little bit of a somber ride today. I'm taken to the site of one of the largest mass murders in California. The murder started in Los Angeles and ended over 200 miles later. It's definitely a sad date in California history. And surprisingly, this is not the first time it happened. A nearly identical murder happened in 1964. Straight ahead of you, just above that little tiny bush on the side of that hill, is the impact point of Flight 771 of Pacific West Air on a flight from Los Angeles to San Francisco on December 7th, 1987. It's the worst mass murder in California since an identical hijacking of Flight 773 in 1964. This time the killer had been fired from his job at Pacific West, but they didn't pull his pass credentials or his identification card, which allowed him to take a borrowed 44 Magnum and follow the manager who fired him on board. The flight data recorder recorded the shots probably through the microphones of the pilot and co-pilot. The killer had been fired from his job at PacWest for reasons, but they didn't pull his pass credentials and his access cards. The flight data recorder heard the first shot, which was likely the killer shooting the manager that fired him. They didn't find that particular chair, but they found the back of the seat on the row behind him with a 44 Magnum bullet hole in it. The next couple shots was the killer shooting the pilot and the co-pilot and one of the flight attendants. Then the black box recorded increasing wind noises, an airspeed indicator, and all indications was the killer grabbed the controls, pushed the throttles to the wall, and dove the plane down. As the plane descended, it passed Mach 1 moments before it hit the ground. Just mere moments before it hit the ground. The impact was so great that the fuel completely vaporized and went up in, one, in a single fireball 
so nothing else was burning uh, as rescuers finally found the place. They couldn't find the impact zone at first because there was no fire, there was no smoke to lead them to it. It took a couple hours uh, before a news helicopter saw the impact and saw the debris field. Now the debris field covers everything you see here that's around me. It was up in the trees, it was along the ground. This fence line had been destroyed, had been pushed down from the, from the blast. All the little bushes and stuff right out here were gone. And there's a very, there's a two foot deep crater right up here. Ah, that, that pushed out, but that's very, very rocky right there. So, which minimized the airplane digging into the ground as much. It hit the rocks and simply shattered. The largest piece of airplane outside of the wheels of the engine was no bigger than a piece of paper, than a notebook piece of paper or a dinner plate. Nearly all the bodies were, uh, sadly, beyond, were just destroyed beyond recognition. They had to do DNA sampling. Uh, it's one of the first cases solved by DNA. And they found out who the killer was because they did find the gun. And a piece of his index finger was stuck in the trigger guard. Uh, they cleaned it up pretty good. I've been out here before. And they cleaned up this area pretty good. So there's, if, if you can find a, well, I spoke too soon. That's a piece of broken aluminum. That's a small piece of broken aluminum from the aircraft itself. A little bit of paint left on it. I don't know if it's interior or exterior.